What's up everybody? <clears throat> What's up guys? How are you guys doing today? Alright, uh, welcome. Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody. How are you? It's time for discussion time. Discussion time. Oh, okay. Official CC. What's going on? <clears throat> I'm having audio issues. Hmm. Maybe you should turn your phone off. All right. You're ready, boss. That's good. All right. It's time to discuss. I can't hear the sound. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe your phone is going crazy. Has somebody typed something there for her to turn her phone off and, and restart? What's up, everybody? How are you? How are you guys doing? Okay. All right, let's go ahead and just start this show right now. It's time to discuss. Oh, let's discuss this thing right. All right, my, my lips are burning. Ah, Jesus Christ. It's okay. I will survive. I'm going to survive. Oh, God. So welcome, everybody. Thank you very much uh, for joining today. I really appreciate you guys for joining. Um, I'm not going to take your time because I still have a few sessions to take tonight. Uh, starting from uh, around 7, I'm still going to be in session uh, all through until like 9 um, p.m. Okay. Um, let's start like this. Uh, I noticed that Nigerians or Africans, we, we, we find it very difficult to understand what abuse is all about. And that's why we fight. We fight when people talk about, I got separated from my husband, I got divorced, you know, we fight them. Well, we believe, oh no, you have not tried enough. Uh, we believe, oh no, no, you have not prayed enough. You should pray some more. You know, no, it's not a big deal. It's going to change. Or she is going to change. Ah, uh, no, you can't do that. All right, I see that a lot. People believe that, okay, when you are in an abusive relationship, uh, just continue to pray. A day is coming that it's going to change. We have to give people second chances and all kinds of stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying people don't change. I changed. But if somebody is willing to change, nobody should talk to them. You know, they themselves will make up their mind and then they sit down and they will tell themselves that I am ready to do something right. I'm tired of doing all this stuff I'm doing. I want to do something different. I want to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Okay? So we... We... We celebrate women uh, who remain inside of relationship for 20 years waiting for their husbands to change or men waiting for their wives to change. And it's dangerous. And it's very dangerous. And you see, the reason why we do this is very simple. Very, very simple. Because majority of Africans, they grew up in abusive relationship, abusive homes. So it has become normal. It has become normal, you know, for us, that we believe that's the way life should be. Because you grew up in an abusive environment, you, you feel that is it. That's all what life could offer. All right? And, and that's, that's, that's the way it should be. So growing up, we believe that, oh, but our mothers endured. But our mothers went through uh, this abuse and today they are being celebrated and all kinds of stuff like that. Some of them are already dead. They died in this same abusive relationship. Uh, you know, that they they found themselves. They had no voice. They had nobody to report to. If they go to their homes, the dad will send them back. 
Their fathers will send them back to the same house. So growing up in an abusive environment will make it to look like it's normal. But it's not normal. It's not. All right? And most of us, we always use one story. We use one, one particular story to judge the rest of them. Because somebody shared a story of, oh, I, I was in an abusive relationship for 10 years. I waited, I prayed, and in 15th year, my husband changed. And everybody will come and say, yes, this is what I'm talking. People should just be, there people are just in a hurry to leave. They are always in a hurry to leave. It's because we are so dumb. We are dumb. You, you, you are, you're using one person's story to judge the rest of them. You can't. You can't use one person's story to judge if abuse is actually something endurable or not. All right? That one person is only one out of one million. If that only one person is just one person. It's just only one person out of one million people going through the same thing. And those ones are actually in the grave today. If you want to use accident to judge things that, okay, somebody was in a, in a plane, in a plane uh, crash and he survived. Okay? Oh, somebody was in a plane crash and he survived. Okay? Well, why don't you think about the ones that were involved in plane crashes and they are no longer available today? I don't know why we Africans do this. Even you women, the ones that are complaining, that are actually making comments right now, they were one of those ones. If I bring the stuff out, I'll be mentioning your names, the comments you posted there. Majority of you are killers. You are killers. You are iron killers. You, you just, I don't know who created you. Maybe it's the devil that created you guys. You just want to kill people. As a pastor, when we were called into the ministry, we were called to save lives. As a doctor, you're called into the, min, into the, into the field to save life. As a counselor, you're called into the, into the business to save lives, not to kill them. So you need to first of all analyze the whole thing. Break the whole system down. You know, look at the big picture. Don't just use one person's story to now judge the rest of them. When you start doing that, it means you're done. You can't use a person's story to judge the rest of them. If somebody's writing, I'm happily married. Don't, 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 you don't, don't believe that. Never you believe. If somebody says, I'm happily married, I'm happily, mar I'm happily married my, my, my food. I'm happily married. Who is happily married? Who, who exactly is happily married? Who? Every one of us were just enduring it. Including me. Including myself. We are enduring marriage. Marriage will get a, a point that you will get tired of it. Marriage will get the time all of this loving, loving and jumping all around, kissing each other on social media. It's going to end. The rest of your old stuff is just managing each other. Let's go for retreat. Let's go for conferences. Let's go for, for vacation. Let's sit down and talk. Let's do this. Let's see a council. All of this stuff is just what we use. We use all this stuff just to manage the relationship. That first fire is going to die. They call it sea finish. That first fire is going to go. Okay? And, and when, when it's gone, when it's gone, that's it. Then all you need to do is just to try to fire it back up. Fire it back up. Fire it back up. You keep moving. You keep going. You keep going. Just, you're, you're actually walking and walking and walking on it. You can't get back to how it used to be. You can never get back to how it used to be. You know, inside of a woman, there's oh, there's a butterfly. The butterfly is dead. The butterfly died. The second year, the butterfly died the fifth year. In the heart of a man, they'll be saying, Oh my God, you are my you are my mom. Oh, you are my mother. Oh, you are my this. That stuff is go go. The rest of the old stuff is more of managing it, and now we now go for retreat, we go for vacation, we go for this, and we go for all that, just for us to manage the marriage and still remain there. And still remain inside of the marriage. We, we, we forgive, we forgive, we forget, we forgive, we forget, we forgive, we forget multiple times, many times. But that doesn't mean that everybody will actually be able to do that. 
That doesn't mean everybody's going to be able to do that. Some people, they actually, they, they are married to the devil. Some people are married to the devil. Alright? And when, when I'm talking about the devil, the devil is someone that is not ready to talk. He's not ready to talk to them. He's actually frustrating them. The person is cheating. The person is lying. The person is playing game. The person wants to kill them. So when you look into what abuse is all about, you will find out that abuse is a killer. Abuse is a killer. It will take your life. The very first thing abuse is going to do to you is going to make you stagnant. The next thing abuse is going to do to you is going to make you withdraw. From everybody who loves you. For everybody who cares about you. And somebody who is an abuser, he will never let you have people around you. He will make sure he cut you off of everybody that is around you so he could continue to treat you the way he's treating you and you have nobody to help you. In this kind of a case whereby somebody is actually dying gradually. And you're telling the guy that, oh, you have to endure. Just keep on praying. Just keep on praying. I'm telling you, one day... One day you will realize that the prayer is not going to work and at the end of the day, you are actually totally drained and you are about to enter into the grave. I tell people this all the time. The pastors that are preaching, oh, remain in the abusive relationship, continue to pray, they will be the one to come and officiate your barrier. And they know how to do that stuff very well. They know how to do it. I, I, I sang the song to you guys one time like that. They will just come. One guy will just carry him book. Say, I hope I let you know. I hope I let you know. That's how I'm going to do it. That's how I'm going to do it. Oh, my God, I'll be crystal. Oh, my God, I'll be crystal. I hope I let you know. I hope I let you know. Then the pastor will come and say, Oh, Lufer, what do you want to say? You want to say, Sister Mary, you need to repay Sister Mary to get along with me. You want to see me to get along with me. I will go to the school. I will come and celebrate. You need to see Sister Mary, my Jesus, who is in the world. I do not want to buy one beer. I want to do one. I do not 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 want to do one. You are dead. You, you are gone on your way to hell. You are on your way to hell. You are on your way. I don't know where you are going. I don't even know. Maybe it's heaven or hell. I don't even know. The man we sit down there, we, we sit down wearing black. He will use sunshade. Oh, he will use sunshade. And inside of him, inside of him, all right, inside of him, man, I'm telling you, he's actually telling himself, I killed this woman. I killed this woman. I killed this woman. We are sunshine. Everybody will be touching him. They'll say, they will be messing up. And some people will be messing up. He says, you are dead. You are done. You are dead. I want, my God are waiting to eat you. Maggots, they are waiting to eat you. And then they will say, I'm over alone. I'm over alone. You just died. You could sara loku. The children that you have, four of those kids here. Okay, that you're supposed to guide, protect, mentor. Those ones are gonna be there without anybody to mentor them. And those guys will suffer big time. They'll suffer big time. The same pastors that are preaching that same messages to you will be the one to officiate. And then when they're done, you know what funny thing about this whole stuff that they're still going to be expecting on the radio. That's one thing I hate. They will still going to be expecting on the radio from actually burying you after killing you. They killed you, then they bury you, then they will collect on the radio and then they will package their rice and jollof rice and chicken and all. They will, their meat will be big like this. Then they, they, they go say, I will not run share Lua. They will not go and put their own food in the car. They don't eat in front of people. Don't want to do it in front of people. They go and put their own food inside of the car. And you, you are dead. You are gone. My God is waiting to chop you. On your way going to heaven, you only have a pain by you. Ah, I'm bad at listening to the pastor. So I don't in social media. But when you listen, your head is not that correct to that level for you to listen to what I'm saying to you. 
You think I'm stupid? You see, there is no pastor in this world that wants divorce. We don't want people to get divorced. It happens. It's life. That's life. No matter how we pray, if it's meant to happen, it will happen. It's not like we are praying for it to happen. But when your stupid husband is not willing to change, when your stupid wife is not willing to change, what are we supposed to do? And your life is actually on the line. And your life is on the line. Are we supposed to now tell you to stay there and die? No, we don't want you dead. We don't want you to die. We want you to be alive to, to be the mother of your children. No, you know. We want you to be the mother of your kids. We want you to be the father of your children. You stupid idiot. You not listen. Like I said, okay, marriage is a ticket to heaven. Oh, my, my marriage. <laughs> my marriage. My marriage. My marriage. My marriage. My marriage. You see, if the man is ready to leave you, we walk away. Marriage is wrong. Don't dream. Okay, which, which marriage are you holding? When the man is ready to walk away, is this gone? He's gone. I can't bump you. So, what is law? What is law here? The marriage you are holding, my marriage, my marriage, which, your, which marriage? You don't owe anything. There is nothing called your marriage. Which your marriage? You guys are just living together for now. Anything could happen tomorrow. If the guy is tired of you, he's gone. Which marriage are you holding on to? Get, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of this place. My marriage, my marriage. Which, which, what is your marriage? Where is the marriage that you're saying, my marriage, my marriage? You, you own nothing in this world. You, 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 it's, not only my, it's a matter of agreement for us to live together. You think, you think that person belongs to you? You think the person belongs to you? Authority. You see, what, what am I driving at? What I'm driving at is this. Education is very important. What do I mean by education? I'm not talking about you going to take master's degree or PhD or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you understanding marriage. You are going to be a destroyer of another person's life if you don't understand why you are in the marriage and your responsibility in the marriage. Am I ready? Am I ready? Oh, 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 Pastor, do you take, do you take full care as your wedded wife say, I do. The man will now say, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. I do. And the man will separate himself from all other women and stick to his wife alone. I do. Oh, my boy, Lori Gari. You remember me? Lori Gari. It's only born on line line. Lori Gari. Oh, she. They will never, never listen. Oh, I do, I do. Come on, I do. You don't even understand the meaning of it. He's not saying, I do, I do. Actually, it was of me because all course of paper and they wrote it in the paper and said, Just say I do. You just saying I do. Are you women? The woman too is just standing there like Mumu. You didn't call the man and see the woman man, man dancing. Let's go for premarital counseling. Let's go for premarital. Let them explain I do to you. Do you know I do? Do you understand the meaning of I do? You don't. Well, let's go for premarital counseling. Let them explain it to you one by one. Okay? We now tell you when you say I do, uh -huh, it means you have to be lawyer. Are we getting it? Yes, okay. What does it mean to be lawyer? It means this is the person that was the key in your life. This person falls before anybody. Good? Yes. Leave your father and mother. Do you know what it means? It means that your mom cannot sit on your wife. Hello? Yes, sir. It means your daddy can't sleep on your husband. Yes. You get it? Okay. Your number one, your number one fan is your wife, is your husband. Do you get it? Yes, it's time. You have to wash the plate. You have to do the laundry. You have to help your wife. You have to take care of kids. You have to help your husband. You have to pay bills together. I do? Yes, sir. Okay, that's the meaning. No cheating. I do? Yes. Let's open Bible. Men do not cheat. Malachi chapter 2 verse 6. Men do not cheat. It's there. If you want me to read it to you, I'll read it to you. That's the kind of a man that you want to stay with. That's the kind of a man you want to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to manage this stuff. I'm going to stay in this marriage. It's not the kind of man that will put you on a roller coaster marriage. When you get on a roller coaster marriage today, you're happy. Tomorrow, you're not. 20 days, you're not happy. One year, you're not happy. Two years, you're not happy. You're dying gradually. Whoever is telling you to remain there should go and talk to the man. Go talk to your wife. Go talk to them. Sit them down and talk to them and say, you know what? Do you still... Do you really want this marriage? Do you really 
you want this marriage? Do you? Because during the altar, when we were asking, you, you were saying, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Like, you do understand it. You don't understand Jack. All of those stuff, you are just fooling the people and the God. They say, they say, in front of God and in front of these people, I therefore pronounce you. You are just fooling the people and fooling God. Because you are not ready. You, 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 don't, you don't know Jack. Oh, man, nothing. Nothing for you. Sort of what I know over here. And you will be it's gonna change. It's gonna change. Somebody that 85% of people who cheat don't change. 85% of people who cheat, they don't change. They remain the same forever. They will say, I'm sorry, and then they will go back to it. They will say, I'm sorry, they go right back into it. They say, I'm sorry, they go right back into it. And then they become smarter. Then they become smarter when they're doing their stuff. Alright? They will make sure that they clean all the all the all the all the all the fingerprints and you will never see nothing. You will just be there and one day you have STD. You now start asking yourself, how come I have STD? I don't know. It's you. I don't know. You ask yourself. Okay? He must have gone to treat himself, and you are the one now that is feeling the pain. Not him. Not him. My point is this, and I'm going to maintain my point because I've been preaching it forever. Men always think I'm against them, but I'm not against you. All I'm saying here is that men should understand their responsibility and actually function in that responsibility. What do you mean responsibility? Responsibility of a man is to showcase how he wants the family to be to his wife and to his children. A man who is cheating, you are teaching your wife to cheat too. Oh, women cheat too. Who started it? Who started this stuff? You did. All right. Oh, my wife is disrespectful. Hello, it is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to be able to train your wife. Let your wife mirror what you have. What you have is what your wife is seeing, and what she's seeing is what it's going to be. And I tell men this all the time, and they will never listen. You are the one with the right to choose a wife. Choose right. Choose right. If you choose the wrong person, you are the one digging a grave for yourself. Choose the right person. And don't tell me, oh, they are, they, are, they are pretending. It is because you are not looking for it, you can never find it. You will never find it. If you are not looking for their fault, if you are not looking for their mental health state, you are not looking for their character, you are not looking at their temperament, you can't find it. You have to be intentional. What you're looking for is what you're looking for. When, when investigators come into a house, they are looking for cocaine. They just don't enter the house and just start looking up and down. They know what they're looking for. They know where those things could be kept. They go there. And then they find it. And then you say, Tada, you are busted. But when you are not looking for something, you are busy going gallivanting and eating suya and eating pepper soup all around the place. How will you be able to know who is this person who is not? How will you be able to detect this is a character and this is not a character? It is the character you are looking for. And that's your target. That's what you're going to be looking for. That's, that's what you're going to be tracing. Look at the way she's talking to her mother. Look at the way she's talking to her sister. Look at the way she's talking to her friends. Okay? So the man is actually you are the head of the home, and if anything should go wrong in that home, it's your responsibility, it's your fault as a man. If anything should go wrong in your marriage, if anything should go wrong in your marriage, it's your fault. I will say it two billion times. I will say it two billion times. You are responsible. If anything should go wrong in a company, they go for the CEO. I know you believe that. If anything should go wrong in the country, they go for the president. All right? I know you believe that. If anything should go wrong in a church, they go for the pastor. I know you believe that. If anything should go wrong in marriage, you go for the man. And you will disagree on that one because you don't want to do right. That's where you disagree. You agree to CEO, you agree to president, you agree to pastor, and then when it comes to marriage, then you disagree. That's one thing I don't understand. The same principle. Head is a head. It doesn't matter on, 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 on where, in, in, in what capacity. A head is a head. The moment something is wrong, the head should be put 
inside of that particular cage and ask him questions. Why? How come your marriage is about to hit the, the rocks? How come your marriage is about to crash land? You as a man supposed to go for counseling. No, you don't want to. You as a man supposed to learn leadership. Oh, I know everything. You as a man supposed to go for retreats. I know all time. You as a man supposed to go for, for vacation. Oh, I got no money. You as a man supposed to go for conferences. Oh, I don't have time. You don't have time. You don't have time. It's your fault. Marriage is a full-time job. You take it as a full-time job that you have to upgrade constantly. You do upgrade all, all the time. Upgrade all the time. But when we talk about this, that's when you disagree. That's when you start speaking English. What does he have to mean? What is the meaning of this? What does women have to gain from this? That's what you'll be saying. That's what you'll be saying. But for you to be responsible, you don't want to be responsible. Your marriage is going to crash like whether you like it or not if your character is not in tune. Your character is not in line with anybody, who, I mean, with a real good man. Forget about that stuff. You see, God of those days when pastors will be preaching to women and say, hey, go and respect your husband. Go and need that to your husband. Which husband? Husband my foot. Which husband are you talking about? What, what husband? Where is the husband that I'm seeing? A cheat. You, you, your husband, the husband is a cheat. And you say, go and respect which husband? A husband is supposed to be a lover of God. A husband is supposed to be the high of God. A husband is supposed to be talking to God daily. You must take instruction from God. A husband is supposed to know how Christ loved the church. Do you know it? You don't. But you come on the board, social media and start arguing. You come there and start arguing. It be women too. Women too. Which women too? Which women too? I remember when I was working for Slumber J. They made me, they made me to be in charge of eight people. I must account for those eight people. They must obey me. They must respect me. Okay? I must do everything to make sure that they respect me. So I decided to learn about their lives. I learn about their temperament. Okay? So I decided to come down to that level to communicate with everybody one by one in a different way. Even within the church. Some people are cuckoo in the head in church. You have to, you have to be able to relate, relate with them on their own level. Some people are quiet. You have to relate with them on that level. You know everybody's temperament. You understand their character. You know their fear. Okay? Then you now be able to deal with them based on who they are. Have you taken time to study your spouse? Have you taken time to study your husband? Have you taken time to study your wife? Oh, what are you talking? What are you talking? He's talking about condemning men. You guys sleep somewhere. I don't understand what you're talking. It's condemning men. Who's condemning men? Am I not a man? They get defensive. They're very defensive. Low self-esteem people. They get so defensive. Let me take this guy out of this place. He's a very stupid person. Very stupid person. He doesn't understand Jack. You know what I'm saying? They get defensive. They get very defensive. All right? It's, it's a... It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. That I see. So when I read the comments of people on that post, actually, my, my, I, I started grieving. I said, I, I said, no, 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 wickedness is too much. Then I noticed one thing, that I went back to do research, I found that majority of us grew up in an abusive environment. So we have normalized it. We believe that's the way it should be. No. That's not the way it should be. That's not the way it should be. Marriage is supposed to be enjoyable. Marriage is supposed to elongate your life, not shortening your life. That's what marriage is. All right? So if you want to operate in marriage, you as a man must be ready to listen. You as a man must be ready to upgrade. You as a man supposed to learn leadership. You as a man supposed to know God. You as a man must be calm. You as a man must be a leader. And a leader must be calm must know everybody within his own house. You treat your children differently based on their temperament. You see, the one that you yell at is different from the one that you'll be quiet with. The one that you will push is different from the one that is already being pushed and you just encourage. Okay, that's exactly how you do it. But a lot of men don't know Jack. They don't know anything. They just believe that they're the man, the man, and they just have baritone voice and a penis. That's all. That's all they are. Nothing. Those are baritone voice and they start. 
They go to church, they be looking at the bum bum of women all around. Nonsense. Nonsense. No, I don't buy that kind of stupid life. You want to be married, you must be ready to be married. To be married is a whole lot. It's a big time job. It's difficult. Very difficult. You must be ready to pass through it. And go to school and learn leadership to be able to know the person that you are with and how to talk, talk to them, communicate with them. You see, let me tell you something. Women are the most simple, the most, the most simplest, you know, human being to deal with. All you need to know is to know them. Get to know them. Meet them. Know our language of love. Study our well. All right. Whatever it is you want to do, be transparent with her. Don't play games with her. All right? Open yourself to her. All right? Let her be able to have a voice in the relationship. Let her talk to you. Reason with her. I, I, I took a counseling session like about, like about a month ago. Like about a month ago. And the, and the family was on fire. They were about to get divorced. And uh, somebody reached out to me and said, Pastor Zola, can, 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 you, can you help this family? I said, Let's give it a try. So I did. I, and I, I spoke to the to the woman. The woman, she 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 spoke to me straight for three hours. I was like, this guy is a criminal. This guy must be a criminal. These three hours of my husband this, my husband this, my husband, it man must be a criminal. So I decided, okay, let me talk to the guy too. So I love to do separate sessions. I'll do one session for the husband, one session for the wife, then I'll do joint. You know, why do I do that? It's because there are certain things that you as a wife may want to tell me. But you don't want me to tell your husband. You just want me to have an idea of where you guys are coming from. And then the man may want to share something that he will not want me to share with the wife. And then she, he will tell it to me. And I'll just have it more like a background. So I'm not going to bring it up. But it's going to give me an idea why the guy is angry and stuff. So I, I was able to jot my points down. Just jot my points down. Then I called the guy. So when I called the guy... The guy actually, he spoke with me for probably like about two hours. And I asked the guy, I said, sir, I said, can you tell me where you're wrong in all this stuff? He said, pastor, I am wrong in all. I said, what are you willing to do, sir? He was like, I don't know. I just want you to just, uh, you know, help me to beg her and I'm willing to change. Now I know that this whole stuff I'm doing, they're all generally wrong. I was like, have you taken your time to tell her? I said, no, I've not because she won't listen. And all kinds of so I said, okay, I'm going to extend it. So I, I decided to have another session with the woman before the joint. And I shared with the woman, I said, your husband is guilty. I said, oh, did he confess? I said, yes, he confessed everything. And, you know, and me, I see him to be a kind of a genuine kind of guy. No ego at all. He's ready to talk with me. He, he, he wasn't hiding nothing and all kinds of stuff. And he's willing to change. I said, can you just do one thing for me? Let me mentor your husband. Forgive him and let him stick to me. And at the end of the day, you're going to be able to see a change. And the lady was like, okay. So I called a joint meeting. And the guy was quiet all through. Uh, you know, he allowed me to say, to, 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 to do all the talking. And I apologized to the wife. And he apologized to the wife. And the wife apologized to him. And stuff. And at the end of the day, they kissed each other. Like I, I, just, I always ask the couples to kiss, his, to kiss each other. And he did. And he did. And, um, I left them alone. And a month after, so I, I rescheduled the wife uh, for a meeting. And, and she jumped on the Zoom. And she said to me, she said, we have never had this kind of peace in 12 years. We've never experienced this kind of peace in 12 years, Pastor Shola. I am not sure what you did to him. I'm not sure what you have been teaching him. But this guy has turned around 360 degrees. I just sat down there and I asked the woman, I said, did you change your approach the way you talk to him? And she said, no. It's just that he's just willing. He's just willing. I said, cool. I said, let me teach you one more thing. I said, if you want to talk to your husband, don't just talk to him whenever it is that you feel you want to talk to him. Don't just talk to him when the old stuff is hard. Just keep quiet sometimes. A woman should be able to keep quiet. Hold it in. Don't just let it just erupt. Just like that. I said there will be a day that you will actually stand up from the TV and come to the kitchen and lean on that fountain. And by the time you guys are asking you, uh, forget what are you cooking. 
that's actually a moment to talk. You know, say I'm cooking, I'm allowed for you. Say, why do you like it? Do you want a bakery or what? He's like, oh well, anything. A furrow is too good. I say, oh, but uh, there's something I want to quickly just run up, run uh, with you. Uh, the other day when so and so and so happened, what, what, what exactly happened? That guy at that point in time will tell you everything. Will release everything into your hand because at that point in time, he is calm. He's no longer in his brain. He's no longer in his brain. He's not calculating anything. He's not being defensive at that time. He is. Willing, he wants to have a conversation with you. He walks to you by himself. At that point in time, the guy is willing to talk. Then you talk to him, get the answer you want, and that's it. And that's it. You see, for a man that is not willing to learn, you can't learn nothing. A man that is driven by ego, you can't learn nothing. You will still be there and be shouting and yelling and be screaming. All right, that's what you're going to be. Other people that are listening, they're doing well. They're doing well. It is a man that wants to continue cheating. That will be telling a woman to endure in marriage. Why are we supposed to tell women to endure? Why can't we just tell men and other women that are cheating? Why don't you guys just stop cheating? Because if you do it, they're going to catch you. And if they catch you, it's going to become a problem. And by the time it becomes a problem, then you start prostrating all around and begging. Alright? And, and let them just stop. Instead of you telling women to endure. The women that are enduring, they're dying. The women are enduring this stuff are dying. That's not part of human life. It's not supposed to be the life of a woman or a man to endure abuse. You're not supposed to endure abuse. No. And nobody should actually be abusive. Nobody should be. For us to balance the equation up, let's make it let's make it a point of duty to educate people. You know what abuse is. There is emotional abuse, there is sexual abuse, there is physical abuse, there is all kinds of different you know forms of abuse. Preach it to them. If you have been engaged in this stuff, stop it. Quit quit this stuff. Quit this stuff. Don't do it. You know. If you do this stuff, this is the effect. The effect is not going to be good on your wife. Your wife is going to become moody. Your wife is going to withdraw. Your wife is going to be sad. Your wife is going to be depressed. How long do you think she could hold it? She's not going to be able to function well. It's possible for her to lose her job. She'll be crying every night. It's going to affect her health. It's going to affect her mental health. She's going to go cuckoo in her head. And then she starts acting one kind. And you, you are the one. And you are the ones. Uh, you are the one causing this for her. You are the one causing this for her. You are the one causing this. Change your way. Be respectful. Look at that. Love and respect. Love and and respect the love she most desires and the respect he desperately needs. All right, this is a fantastic book for couples to buy. Fantastic book for couples to buy and sit down and read it together. Understand what is good for you is good for her. She want to be respected, you want to be respected. She want to be loved. You want to be loved too. Why don't we just sit down together and amend the foundation and tell each other, you know what? I think I'm ready to do something new right now. I'm preaching this message right now because December is actually coming. And by December, we are already warming up to go into 2024. And 2024 must start on a new ground. Okay, your marriage must work. And that's why this is the month for counseling. This is a month for counseling. This is a month for talking. This is a month for board meetings. Where husband and wife will sit down and hold meetings. This is the time for us to say, you know what? Let us take our marriage to a counselor. Let's go talk about, let them advise us. Let them advise us. Give us direction to go. This is, this is, this is what, what I've been doing. Do you think I'm wrong? Oh, yeah, you're wrong. You cannot lead your wife as a dictator. You can't be a dictator and expecting your wife to comply. No, she's not 
She's not animal. She's not animal. She's human being like yourself. She deserves to be respected and loved. Likewise yourself. Likewise yourself. There we go. Then we talk about lang you know, language of love. You know, I told the guy, I said, uh, have you ever bought anything for your wife before? He was like, no. I was like, why not? I was like, I don't think it's necessary. I said, it is necessary. You know, it doesn't matter how tiny it may be. Maybe probably like a pencil. You know, you buy a pencil coming from work and you, you just let her just say, honey, I, I bought this for you. It's not about how much it costs. It's not about the value of it. It's not, maybe it's a pencil or not. It's just that the heart, the heart that is behind you purchasing this stuff like you're thinking about. You're thinking of her and you, you know, just say, let me buy something for her. And you did. You know, majority of our men out there, have, have you, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question. Have, have you taken time to sit your wife down and ask her, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? Where do you see yourself in five years time? Why do you, where do you see yourself in 20 years time? You know, where? Where? Dr. Shola, I beg mine countless time that we go for counseling, but he keeps saying he didn't have any problem. Now that I left, he's begging me to go for counseling. <laughs> You know, where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? That stuff will gladden the heart of a woman. Oh my God, he's thinking about me. Oh my God, he's thinking of me. Are you thinking of her? Are you really thinking of her? I canceled another lady yesterday. The husband is just living in the house. She's just the cook and a sex machine. That's all she is. Nothing more, nothing less. And I share with you guys, you need to run marriage like a business. Marriage is supposed to be like a business. Whereby, the two of, of you guys are investing your lives. They're investing your life. Very valuable. Okay? You can't put a price tag on life. The two of you are investing your lives in the marriage. Okay? And there is nobody who is the CEO or who is the boss. We are partners in this relationship. So the two of us, we're putting our lives in this. We're investing our lives in it. So there must be profit. And the profit is not children. Children, please... When you say profit, profit no be children. The children, they are just the blessing of the union. The blessing of the, the blessing of marriage are the kids. The kids, they are the blessing of marriage. Don't count them as, the, as part of the profit. The profit is supposed to be, okay, I met you. I met you as an OND woman. But I've been able to push you, and right now, you're a PhD holder. That's part of the profit. I met you. You are nobody. And with my support, look at you today. You've been able to be the manager of a company. That's a profit. That's a profit. Right there. So, you all must know, okay, there must be profits. Between the two of us, we've been able to put money together to buy four, five houses. That's a profit. That's a benefit. And the names of the two of you are actually written in gold on all the properties. It's not just only his name. His name alone is not, is not good enough on those properties. It's supposed to be our property. If anything goes wrong and you should die tomorrow, I'm not supposed to contest with anybody. Nobody should contest with me about the house. The house is already carrying the two names. So I'm supposed to be rest assured that it belongs to me, it belongs to you. So nobody else is going to come and contest with me when it comes to that point. When it comes to that point. 
All right? It's a profit. That's part of the profit of marriage that you're enjoying right there. Oh, let's look at the future. Oh, no, no, don't worry about the future. The future is safe because we have retirement plan for both of us. We have health insurance for both of us. We have medical insurance, I mean, uh, 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 life insurance for both of us. So this future is safe. The future is safe. We don't have any problem with the future. It's part of the profit. How do we now monitor the profit? It's by us going in and be sitting down for board meetings constantly. The board meetings are supposed to be between husband and wife. We sit together to hold board meetings. What are we talking about? We are looking at our lives. Am I wasting mine while you are busy decorating yours? Is my life improving and progressing or, or not? What exactly is wrong with my life right now? How can we fix my life? I have been home for 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, just only taking care of kids and cooking. I have not become anything. I have not become anything. All right? This is the point whereby the board meeting must actually always happen. Like the board meeting must happen. It's a time to edit, I mean, audit our lives. It's a time to look into the system and say, am I profiting or am I losing? Oh, you are the only one profiting. I'm not profiting anything. I'm just sitting down here as a full-time housewife. Nothing is coming for me. I'm only taking care of kids. If anything should happen to you, how do you think I'm going to survive? I don't even know where all your, all, your, all your properties are. I don't even know maybe you have any kind of investment. I don't even know maybe you have any house. I don't even know maybe you have any landed properties. Nothing. I don't even know. Are you progressing and I'm not? Or are we both progressing? It's the time for us to sit down and just calculate that and look at it and start marking it. All right, we'll mark it. We keep going. And then at the end of the day, you're supposed to now hire somebody that they call them the project manager. All right? The project manager must actually be part of your system and those are the counselors where we go constantly for them to check our business and look at the business. Is the business working or not? Is the business working or not? And then we go to the finances and we look at it. And say, okay, where, where are the accounts? Are you a signatory to the account or not? Can you manage money or not? Is he the only one in control of money? Oh, we are both in control of money. All right? Can I see the account? Can I move money? Do I have a debit card too? Can I spend money too? Or I cannot. Or am I just an employee that is just working here that you pay salary to? These are the things that you have to go into and look at all of this stuff and be able to form that company. And make sure the company is yielding interest. And make sure the company is something that you're working on. And you are improving on it for the company to bring more benefits to the two of you. So marriage is kind of like supposed to be an intentional thing that you must have a target. Where are we going? It's not that somebody just married you and said, Kasha mo bimo. Is that mo bimo? O kon bimo, o bimo ele, o bimo to, o bimo ele, o bimo to. At the end of the day, you just stay home and be taking care of you. You school run. I'm doing school run, sir. And I'm doing school runs. I'm taking the kid to basketball. I'm taking this kid to dance class. I'm taking them to ballet class. At the end of the day, those kids will turn 18 and get out of your life. You see, a lot of women are watching me right now. The day of reality is coming. When your kids are grown, they turn 18 and they are gone, that's when you realize that you have not profited anything. That you're just sitting down there taking care of kids. You're just sitting down there taking care of kids. I was sitting down there taking care of kids. That's it. That's it. You later find out. If you don't start holding board meetings now, at that point in time, it will be too late. And why do I say it's too late? Because that time you will have turned 55, or turned 56, or turned 60. And then you now start asking yourself, Iboniki in Tibere, 
Where am I starting from? I've wasted my life just taking care of kids. I didn't even improve myself. I didn't do nothing. And he's telling you I'm the breadwinner. I'm thinking, no. No. You can't be making bread. Let's bake cake. Let's bake cake. Don't stop bread. We don't want bread. We don't want to eat bread again. Let's bake the cake. And let's bake it together. It's a kind of a baking thing. You are baking it together. You are stirring the flour. Me, I'm cracking the eggs into it. I'm turning the gas cooker on, the, the oven on. You are busy putting it in a pan. And the two of us are looking at the time. And by the time you hear, bang, bang, you open the oven and bring out the cake. And then we slice it. And it's the two of us. The two of us. Both of us must benefit from this. If not, that is a problem. In this marriage, it's a problem. It's not going to end up well. It's never going to end up well. It's not. You do this stuff, your wife will give you peace. Your wife will give you peace. 100% peace. Not going to lie to you. You do these things, you will actually enjoy big time peace and support. And that woman will submit, surrender to your authority. It's a simple fact. It's a simple fact. Your wife will submit to your authority. Simple fact. Your wife will submit to your authority. Very simple. Just try it. Just try it. Try this stuff I'm saying. Try it. Just stop being a bully. Stop yelling. Respect your wife. Respect your wife. Let her have a say. Sit down, hold butt meetings. Flip through the book. Be transparent about everything. Show her where the properties are. Put her name on every document. And you'll be very surprised that the piece that you think you're looking for, you don't have to run around for it. Dr. Zulad, you have a poor, very poor mentality asking him to do stuff with you. And he says, it's not his duty. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's the stuff right there. Very simple. Very, very simple. And that's not going to take away from you. It's not going to reduce you as a man. It's not going to remove your respect. You're going to gain more respect. You're going to gain more respect. You know, if you do this, you're going to gain more peace. If you do this, it's not taking anything away from you. You see, that's sex, sex, sex. It's going to be very easy to have sex with your wife. She, her leg will be permanently open. The cookie will always be fresh every night. She will take you to the bathroom and clean the cookie up for you. To buy the you will buy a fresh cookie, well baked, freshly baked cookie. Luma manjen. Walla la 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 la. Why the lami lami? Walla la la la. Why the la la la? Walla la 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 la. Why the lami di? Oh no, you you won't believe it. Oh my God, Mr. Lamid. Oh my God, oh my God, my life is fresh, nice, beautiful. Tell me. Oh, you need problem. You don't go get a problem at all. You just be chopping cookie like a no man's business. And so, I bet two fish spices. I bet one yours. I bet one yours. If my people go to my cocoa, cocoa balance. I feel my gear to be able to do everything. I bet fish. You get to buy a leg or buy a real yeast. Your brain will turn upside down when you, when you lick up one time. 24-7, the legs are open. You always have access to it. You Nothing. All of these, go my shop, I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop, I'm going to go my you won't need it. You start laughing. So we are saying, but why are you talking about laughing? This is just me. Oh, my lag. Oh, my lag. Oh, my lag. My goodness, oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying right there? <laughs> That's just the issue. <laughs> Somebody say what works for a family may not work for another. Sorry, sir. That's wrong. You know, the principle of marriage is one, it's the same. The people that are actually running the principle are totally different. So the approach or the style, the way you will administer it is actually what is different. The principles are the same. 
the same. One hundred percent the same. Don't fool yourself and say what works for somebody is not working for you. Sorry, no. The principle of marriage is the same. They are all the same anywhere in the world. Hey, she, 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 how you doing? Oh, Papa, she, oh, me, yeah. They can be worried, so you go ask her. I mean, be worried. Disagree. I know you will disagree before. Principle of marriage is the same. It's just like the principle of buying and selling. It's the same. The way we package our businesses is just different. The principle of sowing and reaping is the same. It's just that we plant two totally different things. Everything is the same. Principles of marriage, the same thing. But people that are administering it based on their temperament, character, level of education, level of exposure, is what is different. The principle is the same thing. Don't let anybody fool you. You can disagree all you like. Tukumbo, what's up? Tukumbo, what's going on, my brother? Tukumbo, Tukumbo. It's the same. Same everywhere in the world. If you plant maize in Nigeria, put water into it, it will grow. <coughs> Bring the same maize here. To America, plant it, put water, it will grow. It's the same thing. <coughs> in the climate may be different. Look at when Jesus Christ was talking about the house that was uh, was built upon the rock and the one that was built upon the sand. The same principle. One only put his own on the rock. The only put, other one put his own on the ground. And the same condition affected both of them. Same come, the wind came, the storm came. The same storm, the same wind, all right, came against the two of them. One built his house with the same cement, with the same block, with the same everything. It's the same principle. With the same principle. And the other one built his own upon the sand. With same principle, same block, same cement, same wood, same everything. All right, like that. The storm, the same. The problems of marriage, they're all the same. It's either lack of uh, respect, lack of this. The man is cheating. The woman is cheating. Uh, no communication, no constant sex. It's the same thing. And this same thing will come upon them. But one of them actually stood the test of time because it's built upon the rock. And that rock is knowledge. That rock is understanding. That rock is the right. The rock is understanding and well-balanced education. And that rock is Jesus himself. Alright, so when you have everything, you have everything that you should have, that makes the rock. It's a solid foundation for a guy, a solid foundation for a woman. Build your house on top of it. The same block, the same cement, the same wood, the same iron, iron sheet, everything the same. But just the foundation is totally different. It's totally different. So when you marry someone because you're the same marriage, you marry someone that, is, that doesn't know Christ, it's the same marriage. You go to the altar, you say, I do, I do, I do. It's the same I do. <clears throat> but when the storms of life will come, the one that didn't know God may fall. Why? Because no foundation at all. The one that doesn't know the principle of marriage will fail because he doesn't know Jack. Okay? So that's the, it's the same thing. You don't tell me, oh, what works for A will not work for B. It's the same thing. Respect a woman in America she will be good. Respect a woman in Nigeria, she will be good. Disrespect a woman in America, you will see it. Disrespect a woman in Nigeria is the same thing. The same thing. The same thing. Do you have book written about marriage? Yes, I do. I, I, have, uh, I have books. I have, I have two books, but I have this one. I have this one here. I have this one right here. And this one is my wife, my life. My wife, my life. My wife, like my life. Unlocking the hidden treasures in your wife. This is it. You see, this is not just only for men. It's for everybody. Everybody should have this because as a woman, you know who you are. You'll be able to value yourself. And as a man, you will know who a woman is. You'll be able to put her to use. All right, you're going to respect her, you're going to pump love into her, you're going to give her love, and at the same time, she will reciprocate. It's simple. It's kind of a book you can finish in two hours or one hour. You know, if you want to actually study it, it might take you one month to study it, and then you go from there. My wife, my life. It's right here. It's right. If you want to get a copy of it, you want to purchase a copy of it, you can message me. I will send, I will send a copy to you. You pay for the shipping yourself also. I will send it to you. It's there. Marriage is simple. It's simple. We are the ones that are destroying marriage. We are the ones destroying it because we don't have 
understanding. We don't understand what marriage is all about. And, and, and that's why that brother is saying, what works for somebody may not work for B. It's the same principle. It, it, it can never change. Never change. It's the same principle. Somebody is actually running marriage without knowledge, it's going to fail. Somebody's running marriage without understanding leadership, it's going to fail. Somebody thinking it's all about dictatorship that he wants to do, it's going to fail. So you need to learn the principles so you can have a rock. And then you put your house on that rock and the storm of life will come and you will succeed. You'll still be standing. You're going to still be standing. If my marriage is not perfect, we still quarrel. We still fight sometimes. All right? But I, I'm not going to go to sleep until we settle that fight. That's me. I, I've been able to learn that principle. That principle is don't go to sleep until you settle. I'm not going to settle it tomorrow. I'm settling it now. Right now. We're going to settle it right now. If I am to prostrate, I will prostrate. If I am to beg, I will beg. If you have to kneel, you do the same. Because when we go to sleep and wake up next day, I don't want the devil to minister to me in my sleep. I don't want the devil to minister to me in my sleep. My auntie... My auntie is gentle, shall well, you see, gentle people are dangerous people. Gentle people, they are the most dangerous people in the world. Me, I'm a very loud guy, I'm a troublemaker, but when you offend me, I yell, pa, 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 I'm done. That's not just me. But you see, gentle people, they are very dangerous in life. You don't understand that. The gentle people, you won't even know when you have offended them. Oh, you, oh, you, just, you just sit down there and be watching TV. The only time I will know I've offended her is you will just say, he walk, he walk, he walk. Whenever I hear he walk, he walk, he walk, I've done something. And then my heartbeat will go boom, boom, boom. Then I always remind her, I say, Muni, I blow pressure, what brain? Muni, I'm too freaking funny. They don't need to mention me, Lee. Why didn't you text me? You just text me what I've done. See? So now, what the time move, what the blow brain, you know? It's simple, man. They text you, but I'm going to run out of control. But I'm going to hear you, I'm going to run out of power. 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 It's very simple stuff. And my ass, when I cry like that, you just say, oh, no, 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 And we just cry. Go back behind me, Mr. Pan. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't kill me, oh. You need to go deep, man. I'm very smart. I'm very smart, though. I handle people well, oh, for real. I handle people very well. You know, I have so cozy alone. I just cry. You test me now. Mama she buy. Mama she buy now. Story is even my love. Over my love. Mama she buy now. The the quiet people are the most dangerous. So you won't know when you have offended them. You, you just keep quiet and be looking at you like this. They just quiet. And you have done something crazy. They just catch you. They just catch you. Say ha. <laughs> I was talking to I was talking to my neighbor last night and I was looking back and my neighbor was like why are you looking back I said I don't know <laughs> my neighbor she's a she's a woman so I was talking to her last night you know in front of her in front of her own house and every 20 seconds I would look to the back I would look back <laughs> I, was like, I was like what am I doing here I don't even want her to peep through the window and see me. Why am I going to explain what I'm doing in this place? <laughs> even though I have a good heart, though. I have a good heart, but the woman is very fine. The woman is very, very fine, so but I have a... <laughs> Ah! Auntie, oh, book me for a session. Oh, my God. I've been, I think I've been seeing your message, right? I'm sorry. Please message me again on WhatsApp. Please, please, message me again. And let's, let's do our talking. <laughs> she only included. <laughs> oh, see question. Please see questions posted. Where is the question? Please do the question again. Let me see. I don't have more time anyway. I have to go by seven because I have a session at seven o'clock. But I have blood pressure. I'm crying on you. <laughs> yeah. The quiet people are green snake on that. I know. <laughs> You know, I, I was just looking back. I was like, I don't even know. In case you catch me now talking to this fine woman, will she not? Will she not be angry? What's the WhatsApp number? 
The WhatsApp number is uh, 405. Let me type it here. 405 550 5135. All right. Okay. That's the phone number at the bottom of the screen right there. Uh, bottom of the screen. That's it at the bottom of the screen. You see that you can message me there and then uh, let us talk. So please, I send you a message via Instagram inbox. Okay. I will check it. I will check it again. I'm not sure I've seen it. I always get like four, five, six hundred messages at a time. I posted the question again. Oh, I missed it again. Where is the question? What do you do if the person is unwilling to resolve issues? Thank you. Let me quickly teach you the idea. Okay. Now, men, we don't like pastors. We don't like counselors. We don't like therapy. All right. And we don't like family. We just don't like anything, anybody that will accuse us of anything. You know, you women, you need to go and learn this. We don't. You don't like counseling. We don't like therapy. We don't even like to visit doctor. It's only when we're about to die. That's when we go and visit doctor. We don't like family. Don't report us to anybody. We will never go. Never. You know what we like? And I know it. And I've been using it and it's working. Now, when a woman, when you call me and sign up for my session, I will first create a session with you as a woman and listen to your story. All right? Then I will collect your husband's number myself and his name. I will be the one to call him up. I don't want to put the strategy out here. I don't want to put the whole stuff out here real quick. The moment you the moment you call me, I will give you this strategy. I will go ahead and utilize it. And it has been working 100 percent You see, there is ego in men. They love respect. They love respect. And if you as a man could respect another man, they will be willing to talk with you. They'll be willing to talk with you. There's a strategy to it. So if you want to call me, the telephone number is right there. And guys, please, I beg you, don't call me if you don't care more you. Don't say, but you call yourself a pastor. I, 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 I didn't call myself. You are the one calling me pastor. I didn't tell you I'm a pastor. I, I'm not calling myself pastor. If you don't care money, don't call me. Don't say, hey, but pastors do it for free. You are not my church member. I beg you, you are not paying offering and tithe to my church. Yo. I only do free things for my church member. Please, I didn't call myself pastor. You are the one calling me pastor. All right? My name is Dr. Sholao and I'm a counselor. All right? And my sessions are paid sessions. Oh. So if you don't get money, please no call me. Oh. oh yeah, don't waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. And you know pay me, I'll be on more bad. Ma buy me. Ma so be bad. I say hello, do you? I say hello. Hello, she say hello. And she said yes, she get to my complain. And she go, thank you. I'm not going to buy more. Come up at the mall, lie, 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 lie. To my degree, to my degree, why do I only say deliverance for you? Of any deliverance, oh, my bad, rough for you, deliverance now. Oh yeah, yo. So. So don't call me if you don't give money. She up for Kati. That's me. That's me right there, man. That's me right there. So, so if you don't get money, don't call me. So don't say, but I live in Nigeria. I can tell you how many people have paid me 600,000 naira in Nigeria to do sessions. I'll show you those people. I'll show you invoice. I'll show you invoice. So don't tell me I live in Nigeria. People live in Nigeria and they consult me. They pay me in Nigeria. No, no jokes. All right? Don't be telling me I live in Nigeria. Why do you think Nigeria is different? Is it not the same thing we're buying? I went to Nigeria to sleep in a hotel. They collected $120 from me in Nigeria. So and I didn't complain. I didn't say, but I'm in Nigeria. Mm -mm. Business than business. And please, don't call me. I beg you. Don't bother to call I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you to waste mine too. If you don't get money, don't call me. Oh. So guys, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'm going to save this video. <laughs> I'm going to save this video for the subscribers. You want to go back and rewatch this video, you can see it. You, uh, the only person that will see it is people who are subscribed to my channel. So you can subscribe to my channel for just only $4.99 in a month. $4.99 in a month. And that's actually what you pay. And to get special service from me, 
all right $4.99 in a month subscribe to my channel and then you'll be able to watch all of my shows that are actually right there inside of that portal i removed all of my all of my live programs are removed they're actually in the subscribers channel that's where you see all of my live videos so when you subscribe to it you know you will be able to see all of my other videos right there so thank you very much everybody and god bless you peace have a beautiful day guys and i love you guys i love you guys big time i love you guys big time for real i'm not lying i love you guys big time. let me take a picture of you guys i'm taking a picture of you guys right now right this moment say hey i want to be you over online yo. i want to be booga bless you thank you very much thank you very much thank you thank you thank you god bless you i really appreciate you guys love you thank you very much everybody god bless you